Cool. Hey, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Craig. And it is with great pleasure that I'm having a chat with Dave Haley, who I'm going to say, legendary Aussie metal drummer who's been involved in so many bands. Like just this year alone, you've got a Bremlin, Werewolves, and recently Crisis Act with Young E, um, Ruins, um, Psychroptic, which is your main band. You started with Joe back in the beginning there, the Mentor King. I had a chat to Dave last year, the other Dave from King yeah. last year. As well about that album which was one of my favorites of 2019 so dave this is an absolute pleasure cheers for joining me man thank you very much for having me uh cool and the the news this morning i woke up like everyone else eddie van halen has passed away man what a another one gone this year yeah i mean a sad loss but you know um the legend lives on you know it's yes yeah. what more could you ask for uh, yeah what a, what a life well lived Exactly. Uh, what legacy he has is left on the, the music scene and impacted so many musicians, you know, be it indirectly or, you know, directly that he's had an impact just with the riffs and everything in the work of Eddie Van Halen and the band that alone. So it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, it's. Uh, but it's cancer, you know, it's got to think he was probably in a lot of pain. And, you know, at the end of the day, he's in no more pain and the family have, you know, expressed yeah. the. So. It's unfortunately part of life. Um, it's it. It's going to happen to us all. Exactly. Uh, but he he definitely uh, had an impact on the you know a massive percentage of the the world. What what more can you ask for? That's that's insane. yeah. Huge, huge legacy. So um, I want to ask you about start about your legacy and the legacy you've created with all your bands and especially with your brother, man. Can I ask originally, how did you first get into drums and how did this journey begin for you? Well, I guess originally I wanted to play guitar when I was a kid, not drums. Um, I never actually wanted to play drums, um, which is surprising. Um, now that, you know, I love the instrument, and I, I play it every day. Um, but it was never in, it's never something that I aspired to do or wanted to do. We grew up in a small country town and as part of the um, music curriculum at school, we all had to play an instrument. Um, and I think it was in grade seven, uh, I think there was 15 kids in the, the class and the music teacher, she basically just showed the students how to play a straight eight drum beat. And whoever could play it by default became the, um, the drummer. And I think it was three or four people before me Somehow I managed to play the strap pretty much off the bat. Um, so therefore I was the class drummer. Um, and I only played drums maybe what, twice a week for the first couple of years. Um, and it wasn't until a little bit later on that I was like, well, maybe I should get some lessons and um, try to take it a bit further. So I got serious about probably age 15, is, I would say, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, wanted, I wanted to play guitar first, not drums. But oh, 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 this has come up um, the other day for me. I want to discuss this a little bit more in this. Like growing up in a Tassie as a young metalhead, what was what was that like? And do you feel that music and having drums help focus some of that energy for you as well? Well, yeah. I mean, we were both. Um, yeah, the geographical location of Tassie, yeah. we're isolated from the rest of Australia, which is already isolated from the rest of the world. So, um, yeah, there there wasn't that much to do in terms of activities and things like that, you know, especially in a small country town of a thousand people. So, um, somehow I gravitated towards heavy metal. Um, and I guess I was like, well, now that I'm playing these, this instrument, let's try to play some of those songs. So again, it was, it was very natural. It was not really forced. My parents didn't force us into um, anything musical. You know, they fully supported us, which is cool. You know, uh, obviously I was a very shitty drummer early on and they put up with the racket. Um, um, do you remember what your first kit was, Dave? Yeah, it was a pearl. It was a blue pearl max win, and if I still have it, it would probably be worth thousands of dollars because it it'd be a vintage kit. Um, but at the time, I think 
yeah, I definitely remember um, going along with my dad to buy the kit. It was three hundred and ten dollars, and he paid by check. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the other checking machines. <laughs> yeah, no, I had my first kit. Yeah. And that would have been cool growing up with you and your brother. As you said, I grew up in a, a country town as well. I know that metalheads are a, a, a very small percentage. So it would have been good growing up and having your brother there being a metalhead as well, I suppose, and being able to play guitar and you drum. So he's pretty well the bones of like what would become Psychroptic anyway, as you were young lads there. Yeah, we were always jamming together. Uh, he pro Joe probably wasn't into the heavier end of the spectrum um, early on. Um, yep. But as he was learning how to play guitar, you know, I, I remember buying him a few tab books, you know, Metallica tab books. And so, all right, so learn some of these songs, we'll jam some of these songs, um, you know, and stuff by you know, bands like Soundgarden, Chili Peppers, all that sort of stuff as well. Just, you know, you, you're young and you're trying to develop as a musician. So you, uh, you're taking influence and inspiration from anywhere you can get it. So we were just, I guess, fortunate enough to jam in the same, you live in the same house, so we could actually jam. And at, you know, different points of our growing up, we'd probably play every day um, just because there wasn't much else to do. Yeah. And so, so how did that evolve into starting Psychroptic? Uh, we played in another band before Psychroptic called Seminate, which was, I'd actually say a little bit more black metal. Um, and we did that for about 18 months um, and it kind of reached its natural conclusion. I think we wanted to play a little bit more technical and heavier music. Um, and the other two members probably didn't like it, the direction as much. So, yeah, that's that's essentially how Psychoproptic started. Um, Joe went to school with Cam, our original bass player. Um, so it was like, oh, cool, you know, you're into metal. I heard you play on a Morbid Angel riff before, so do you want to join our band? Um, and the original vocalist, Chalky, um, we just knew him from, from the scene. It was like, cool, let's... We've got these eight songs, let's see what... That's yeah, that's pretty much the start of it all. Yeah, and the rest is history. Now he's a, one of Australia's leading tech death bands for sure, and like a massive fan myself, you know. And I've got two flags from a couple of bands you're involved in just back there, dude. So, uh, yeah. massive kudos to you and your career for Psychroptic, man. As a massive fan, dude, I really enjoyed loved that last album, As the Kingdom Drowns. That was a really, really cool album as well, dude. Can you just? Briefly tell me a little bit about that process as well and releasing that and what was that like as well back then? And Yeah, it's it's always a very natural process with the band and it, it definitely ebbs and flows in terms of our, um, uh, I guess, productivity, creativity and, you know, um, which... Um, I, know, I think it's natural with any sort of creative endeavor. You know, you're yep. not going to be going 100 miles an hour the whole time. So, um, I would say it was definitely thus far my favorite album to work on creatively. Um, um, just because we were at a stage where we, we couldn't really give a shit. <laughs> we don't care what um, uh, you know, so called critics would deem a good or a bad album it's like who cares um, yeah we just want to create music that we want to so having that creative freedom is i guess making us better songwriters because we're a little bit more analytical it's like well okay let's try not to repeat ourselves let's try to keep the process um both fun and challenging um let's try to do something different you know if you listen to all our albums, there's definitely a common thread, but it's it's they're always can sound different, and that's always going to be the way because it enthused it, you know. Um, I'd say I'm a bit of a hypocrite because sometimes I'll you know I get bummed out when a band stylistically changes when they put out a new album, it's completely different. Um, 
but playing in the band, like, I don't want to keep doing the same thing. Yeah. So there's a difference between a listener and, you know, creating it. And once it's created, once it's done, I like to go back and I don't listen to our albums. I don't put them on. Like, oh, I might listen to them all the way through once they're completed. Um, or listen to them when I need to learn them to play them live. But I'm not putting anything I play on and I put it in the stereo and listen to it every day. Like, that would be absurd. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's 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 always a snapshot of where I'm at in that point in time, both creatively and um, just enjoyment-wise on the instrument. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I'm de we, we're definitely looking forward to the new material that Psychropic's doing. Like we'll be releasing some stuff pretty soon, uh, which I think is the best yet. And then the new material we'll a we're actually working on subsequently, I think is better than that. So it's when it when i get to the point where it's i don't think it's as good as or better than something we've done like then it's time to stop yeah i'm, I'm really looking forward to that i eh? uh, you've been you're so busy it must help having all these bands i'll talk about crisis act in a minute but you know it must be good for you having these different outlets stylistically creativity like crisis act being the grindcore band that just started with young and your brother and brett and that but you've got the tech death with that and you've got um werewolves which recently come out i want to talk about that album as well but you also drummed with um one of my all-time favorites as well blood duster and that kind of led into the project um king can you tell me a little bit about your time with blood duster and what that was like that's a huge band and major impact on a lot of metalheads like myself here in australia yeah, well, that was one of the bands I loved as a kid. Yeah, you know, Blood Dust, The Damage, The Bremelin, um, were my top bands. You know, that's what I listened to as a, as a teenager. So I've been fortunate enough to play in two of those bands, which yeah. is completely absurd, you know. In the jam room, at the Psychroptics jam room, we had an autographed poster um, by Bremelin, you know. So that's, that's the reverence they I hold for Aussie metal. Yeah. So, so joining Blood Dust, you know, we played with them a few times um, with Psychroptic and I got to know Jason Fuller um, and I've moved, recently moved over to Melbourne. I think this was back in 2000 and 2007, something like yeah. that, 2008. Uh, he just called me out of the blue. No, it was um, Maddie. Maddie called me um, and said, do you want to play in a band? I'm like, yeah, sure. What band is it? And so, oh, Blood Duster. So I was a little bit taken aback. I was like, oh, okay, sure. I thought it was a bit of a prank. Um, they had a tour the next, I think it was like that following week that were going out on the Napalm Death Tour. So yeah. definitely a trial by fire. Um, and, yeah, it was killer playing with those guys. Like, I love the songs. Um, the dudes are fun to hang out with. Um, you know, my style of drumming, uh, I guess, suited it to a point. But, you know, in as far as I'm concerned, Rizzo has always been the blood dust, the drummer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he gave it that sound. So I was just emulating him and copying him. So, yeah, it was, it was amazing to play with those dudes. And yeah. I'm still friends with them all. Yeah, it's amazing that the, the, the tight-knit community and connections the Australian metal scene has because all these bands that we're mentioning, they're all connected in some way. Like we're mentioning um, the new band with Krauss Act, but Rizzo from King Parrot and, you know, Jason Fuller, he's an unreal producer. He's got that studio down there and everything as well, doesn't he, over in Melbourne? He's unreal. Yeah. He does so much with the metal scene. And then you're mentioning a Brummel and that album, Never Enough Snuff, when you were involved in as the drummer and that is an unreal album. And I had a chat with Rob Molliker about it all when it come out. That album, right? Rocks, dude. I got that one there. I got my flag up. As you were mentioning, these bands as metalheads <laughs> like us hold in reverence, man. They're just, it would have been a really cool experience for you being able to play with two of them, you know, and then recording this this as well. What was that like, you know, getting in there and doing that? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's when when you're in the actual process, when you're in the jam room, you, yeah. you just put all those thoughts away. Like, yeah, yeah it's like, like a, okay, let's, let's focus on the music. Let's you know, I'm here yeah. to do a job, so let's do the job. Yeah. Um, it's always a subsequent afterthought, you know, stepping back going, oh, wow, you know, that's that's pretty fucking cool. You know, 15-year-old Dave would be wigging out right now. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, 
you when you get a job like that, it's a job. You got to turn up. You got to fucking work as hard as you can and do what's required. Um, and that's that's what I like about music. You know, like yeah. you can always get better at it. You can. Um, I'm never going to be satisfied with something I recorded or, or a gig. You know, it might be okay, but there's something I could do better. So that's the approach I take when rehearsing, writing songs, recording, whatever. You know, to try and um, do what's required for the music, as well as doing it to the best of my abilities. Which I'm still learning every day. You know, it's it's a cool process. It's it's an evolution, and uh, in general, people can take that a lot in their life as well. You know, with me, I could get on here and talking to guys like yourself, and you know, Benediction, all these different bands. I could sit on here and fanboy out, but you have a job to do as well. You know what I mean? And to chat about the music and talk about the body of work. So that King, I want to chat. Like King, you got Tony over there on vocals um, with King. I was really wrapped when that band kind of started as well, and I was really impressed with the Coldest of the Cold album, which came out. And that, as I said, was one of my favorite albums of 2019. Just love the heck out of that album it was a really cool album what's it like um what was that process like making that album uh king works a little bit differently um yeah it's it's definitely dave and tony is that they're the creative force so i pretty much get fully confused. um like um <clears throat> i'm actually working on some new stuff at the moment um uh so i'll get the songs with uh like a loose guide to the parts um and maybe some notes uh so it's i don't really have any input in terms of the song structures because when i get them like those guys have already done it yeah um, which is cool that's a, it's a cool way to work so um so my job is to lift the, the songs up you know keep the vibe that they're after and then you know lift them up in terms of the um the the rhythmical uh, approach and the drive in the song. So uh, I do like the process um, because I'll pretty much get an hour at a time. They'll send the whole thing through. Um, and it's my job to interpret the, the songs within a little bit of a, um, uh, a guideline that they've set out. So yep. um, yeah, they're, they're deaf definitely going for that big epic sound you know yeah. um satirical meets immortal meets bathory meets in flames so it's like, okay cool that's a cool reference point um i'm not going to try and jam in as many fills as possible um i'm going to try and strip it back and make the songs sound like songs um, yeah so it's, it's a really fun process yeah that's um, cool Cool band, dude. Eh? It must be good for you too. Um, being so busy and having all this other input, then when you go with King, they've got the rough structure and you can kind of go, okay, then this is what I've got to do too. Sometimes it must be a really good feeling for you as well to have that kind of laid back in the bones yeah. of the song laid out for you as well, being that you're so busy a lot. Yeah, um, it's it's cool. Like every band works differently. Yeah. Uh, and I enjoy the project and I approach them slightly differently. Um, I don't have to tweak, I guess, my style that much. Um, it's, it's more, what am, what am I hearing in the riffs? So I'm just trying to, um, you know, just play music at the end of the day. Um, yeah. So if I'm not trying to put in this new feel that I've just worked on, um, you know that's that's practice time and then you do the practice so when it yeah. comes time to play music the ideas just come out naturally so yeah they're, they're doing the majority of the heavy, heavy lifting for me with the music yep so can i talk about werewolves i want to talk about werewolves before i jump in a crisis act because that's an amazing album dude it's another one of these aussie bands the, the dead are screaming that come out april really cool album i was really impressed with this album it's another aussie metal band that just gets skipped over by a lot of the mainstream media and it does my bloody head in like it really does but this album is so good and really needs to be blasted can you tell me a little bit about that project werewolves and you know this project and the album you worked on yeah well um 
that one was pretty much Matt, uh, who are also playing at Bramall oh, for with Matt. So Matt yeah. Um, uh, you know, he works very close to where I live, so we'd catch up quite often. Um, and I think we just, one day we were just bullshitting about, let's just start a ridiculous straight down the line band. That's the only objective is brutality. So I was like, yeah, cool. What, where do I sign? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And he, so he sent one song through and then he had a couple of days off. Um, and yeah, I, I think as a challenge to himself and cause I was into the first, whatever, however it worked out. Um, he wrote the rest of the album in about four days. It's about bang. Um, so I tried to match his um, insanity. I'm like, well, I'll record this next weekend. Um, so I think I recorded it like a week or two later. Um, um, and then the remainder of the album was recorded a couple of weeks later with Sam, who used to be in the Berserker, um, yeah. on bass and vocals. So I think we feed off the insanity of each other in terms of there's the only objective is brutality and just getting it done as fast as possible. So we've actually we've got an absurd amount of songs that are already recorded, gradually released. Um, so I think we'll have a new album out early next year and then maybe another album later that year. So it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's to come. Wait up. Tuesday. Hey, slight pause. Thank you, Telstra, and thank you, your crappy internet, Australia. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. Crisis, yeah, Werewolves, man. As I was saying, I'm going to put in the links for this because I really want people to check out Werewolves. It's, um, you know, we've mentioned these bands and it's seen how they're all connected, even Matt from uh, Brummel, and, and, you know, it's the, the connections that you've made in these bands are crazy. And it's kind of Crisis Act with um, Joe Haley, which, um, Youngie from King Parrot, and you got Brett from Revocation, and that. It's just an unreal sounding grindcore, straight up, no mess around fucking grindcore album. And I love the shit out of it. And also love, um, Youngie with King Parrot, but also he does a little bit of um, different vocal stylings as well, kind of heavier in some points and a bit meatier, and it just sounds so bloody good. I just put this album, this um, Turn It Off um, EP album, and just crank it right through. And I've had a um, talk to a few other metalheads, that massive grindcore fans, and they're going, man, I actually really love the heck out of this album. Really, really cool, man. Can you tell me a little bit about Crisis Act and kind of how that began and making of this EP? Hey. Uh, it, again, it was very natural. I, I, yeah. I'd, um, I'd always talk to Joe about wanting to do a grind project at some point, you know, straight down the line. We do Psychroptic together, which, you know, like, it's a little bit more intricate. It's um, It takes us a long time to write the songs um, and, and to craft them. So let's do something that's completely the opposite. Let's straight down the line, grind, you know, um, in the style of, um, you know, Terrorizer, and Napalm Death, you know, taking influence from, you know, bands like Damaged, um, Norse, and that sort of thing. Um, and let's just get to the point. Let's just get it done. So Joe runs his own studio in Hobart, um, Crawl Space. And um, so it's a, it's a no-brainer to... Yeah, be able to record things there, and yeah, good friends with Brett. When Revocation was out, I mentioned to him, "Hey, do you want to start a grind band?" He's like, "Sure," and I'm, I was like, "Cool, okay, we'll we'll put it together." Uh, so that was in January, I think, and then by March, we'd already had the songs done, and it's like, "Well, who's gonna who's gonna sing on it?" Let's just hit up Youngie. So sent him a message. He was the only choice and the only person we asked. He's like, "Yep." Um, and I think later that day he sent back vocal demos. Um, we're like, cool. Um, probably the first song he sent through was a little bit more King Parrot style. Maybe, maybe he thought, like, we, we didn't give him any guidance yeah. whatsoever. Cause if, if you're working with an artist, like let them create who they are. Like, you know, if you want something in particular, like do it yourself or, you know, <laughs> 
yeah. ask the person if you can get the job done. Yeah. Um, so we didn't really give him any guidelines. Um, first song he sent through was cool. Um, I think all we said is, no, I just think more napalm terrorizer. And I think, I think he was genuinely stoked because he's like, okay, sick. I get to do something different. You know, may, maybe he thought we wanted the King of Parrot sound, but it was like, no, nah, just yeah. do whatever. Like, just yeah. do what you want to do. Um, and then the rest of the songs was like, okay, that's perfect. Yeah, done. Um, yeah. And it happened very quickly, um, which is, is it's always a good thing when you don't force it. So yep. it's another band. We've got l lots of material that's already done. Um, yeah. So I think we will, we have, we haven't really talked about it that much, but I think we'll release a bunch more seven inches um, and just the music digitally. Um, you know, it's, it's a cool thing to have like the physical seven inch, but yeah, um, I don't think we'll go down the CD path because you know, that's no. just creating more waste in the world that we don't need. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I like yeah. Um, I like all the vinyl and the seven inches that they've come back because collectors like me and mad metalheads, it's yeah, you're not going to get the sales, but you're going to get metalheads that really love the scene and dedicated metalheads that'll buy that record and that will be in their collection and their pride of place. Like I bought a record player just so I can buy these killer records, you know, and they just look so good when they're pressed and everything as well. Exactly, you know, the artwork's a bit bigger and it's, yeah. it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing to collect. Um, it's good for yeah. people like us as well, having the artwork a bit bigger as well. When you reach 40, your eyes don't work as well. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck exactly. is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, again, there's no real objectives or agenda. We'll just keep putting out music. We'll keep making it free. You know, there it is. Like, get it digitally however you want. If you want to pay for a call, if you want to buy the seven inch sick, you know, that'll help us make more stuff. Um, if you want to buy a t shirt, that's all. Cool merch. as well. Yeah. yeah that, you know. That's what I like to do too, dude. I spend tons on merch as well. I'm going to put in links for all of your bands. I'm not going to get you to mention out the best place to support. I'll just whack in links. So make sure everyone gets along and checks out all the bands we've mentioned because they're all top quality bands, that's for sure. Uh, Dave, I'm going to sign out, man. We've been chatting a bit. I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your day, but we're going to chat again, man, because you are a super busy dude and I know you've got a ton of material coming out. Uh, before yes. I sign out, Last word, shout outs or anything you want to add in that I've missed out. Just thank you very much. Like, thanks for your interest. Um, down for a chat whenever. So, um, uh, that's a fun. pleasure, Dave. Thank you. Thank you very much, dude. You have a killer day and thank you. You too. You take care. Cheers, mate. See you later.